Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Bo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good morning. So, if uh, we are going to do something, well, maybe a little different today, but uh, that's good. Difference, different is good, right? Or it can be. Uh, so, we're going to take communion today, but we're going to do communion in the midst of the message. I'm going to kind of lead it and guide it, but I just want to make sure that everybody has your bottle of juice. And everybody has your packet of crackers. Everybody, or is there anybody lacking bottle of juice, packet of crackers? All right, good. So thank you, thank you to the, to the youth to uh, setting that up and getting that passed out uh, this week. Thank you all. Um, so let me just set the stage just for a, a, a minute real quick, and, um, uh, and we'll, get, we'll just dive right into it. So first off, uh, communion is a meal for believers. And, that, and that's important to remember. And it's like, uh, uh, because it, it, is, it is believers engaging in uh, uh, the, the, the life of Jesus. And we're going to talk about today about how we're remembering, but we're also uh, 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 entering into how he is active, but then also, um, uh, you know, the, the expectance of what's coming, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And so, uh, communion is a is a meal for believers. And so, uh, first off, if you're not a believer, well, then today's your lucky day. You know, it says in the Word of God, it says as long as today is still called today, you know, what does that mean? There will be a day when there's no longer, you know, a today. And so, and so, the importance of if you hear his voice today, don't harden your heart, but, but receive the free gift of God. It says in Scripture that God is reconciling the world back to himself through Jesus. God is reconciling the world back to himself through Jesus. And if you look in the, the, the message of, of, of Scripture and, and the message of humanity is we were created in the image and likeness of God and we were, uh, 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 had relationship with Him, but we fell from our created value because of, 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 of sin and the things that we've done. And Jesus, and only by Jesus, are we restored back to the Father as His kids and we have, and we become a new creation, and we have new life in Christ. Christ, who is our life. Christ, who is our life. He is our all in all, and He alone satisfies. And so we look to Jesus, and, and Jesus is the one, uh, and is the only name that's been given to men by which we must be saved. Now the day will come. When every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. What does that mean? The day will come when even unbelievers confess Jesus is Lord. Okay? So, um, I'll give you a little clue. Jesus and me would both rather see you do it now than later on. Okay, all right, so, but anyway, so the day will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus is Lord. And so, if you haven't received Christ, receive him right here, right now. Just receive him right here, right now. Just say, I need you, Jesus. <laughs> and he comes and makes all things new. Now, another thing that I want to, to, to just kind of briefly mention, but yet, let me, even though I'm going to do it briefly, it just means I'm not going to, uh, it doesn't mean that it's not important. It is extremely important. It just means that I'm not going to spend a lot of time teaching on it. A lot of times we can, we can say, oh yeah, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. That was my life for 20-something years. Said I believed in God, said I believed in Jesus, but I, my trust was in me. Okay? 
My trust was not in Jesus. My trust was in me. And so it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, test yourselves and make sure you're in the faith. It's that important. It is so important for us to test ourselves and make sure that we're in the faith. And so as we do this today, I'm not, I'm not saying like, you know, uh, 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 you're not saved. I'm not saying that. But we want to, again, we're going to spend a time remembering, but we're also going to spend a time recognizing the now, and then we're going to spend a time recognizing what will come. All right? So we just say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. You are our God. You are the one that regenerates our spirit. And you are the one that brings us from revelation to revelation, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You, Holy Spirit, are our teacher. And you, Holy Spirit, are the ones that open our mind to understanding. And you, Holy Spirit, empower us to walk in the same manner that Jesus walked. So we say, come Holy Spirit and have your way. And Lord, just as it says in Hebrews, it says that your angels are ministering spirits. And so Lord, we just ask that you spend your ministering spirits to minister to us today. You know right where we are. And we thank you how you meet us right where we are. And so we open ourselves to you for you to do what only you can do. And we just say yes to you. We say yes to whatever it is that you want to do. For you are the God of heaven and of earth. You are the one who speaks and it is. You are the giver of life. And we say yes to you. So, Lord, come, come, come and have your way. We look to you and you alone, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise, for you and you alone are worthy. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the power, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. I have actually really been looking forward to doing this message for, for a long time, and I had actually had it planned um, to do, <clears throat> um, I don't know, a, a, month, a month and a half, two months or so ago, and, uh, and just, you know, there, uh, the Lord kind of got it different ways. But uh, uh, what, what better way than on Thanksgiving week for us to feast together as a body of believers, right? And so today, we're going to do just that. We're going to feast together as a body of believers. Now, one thing that we're going to do, we're going to do just a little bit different, is we're actually going to take communion three times today. Okay? And so that's why you have a whole bottle of juice, and that's also why you have three crackers. Thank you to Anel, for she scoured the internet to find and, and, and order the supplies so we could have just what we needed for today. And so, thank you, Anel, for that. And uh, uh, so you have a bottle of juice, and I'm telling this to you in advance, so when we take communion the first time, you don't just chug the whole bottle, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. So, so let's, uh, we're, you'll need that bottle of juice for all three times that we take communion, and, you'll, and there'll be one cracker, there's three crackers in the packet, right? And there'll be one cracker for each time we take communion, okay? All right, so just laying out a, a little bit of a, a groundwork before we get started. But uh, so today we're going to take communion three times, and we're going to focus on three different things as we do that. And let me give you this real quick. Revelations chapter 1, verse 8. This is the words of our our Lord and Savior, King Jesus. 
I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. A couple of chapters over, 4 8. And the four living creatures, and each one of them having six wings and, and full of eyes around and within, and then day and night, day and night, they did not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. See, we as Christians, we actually live in a tension of God is, the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. Now, if you look at what we actually do a lot of times, though, we, we, I think we kind, of fix, uh, uh, we kind of fixate on one of those three sections uh, in, in a season in our life. Like, like, we might go through a season in our life where we're really just remembering what God has done in our life. And we're remembering the things that He's done in the past because He is the God who was. Or we might live in a season of, man, God is really active in my life. This is what He's doing. And man, I'm just excited about it. And, you know, and, and, and so we live in that season of uh, uh, God is the God who is. Or maybe we live in a season of Okay, especially, you know, all the craziness that's happening, right? And you're like, Lord Jesus, where are you? Please come. And so, you know, we're living a season or in attention of God is the God who will be. And it's like, we're, we're, where are you in all this? We, we, we need you. Come, Lord Jesus, and come quickly. Uh, and, 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 we, and that's Scripture. Uh, but uh, so we kind of live in, 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 we can live in those different seasons. But what I'm suggesting to you today is God always is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. And we as Christians actually need to live in that tension of focusing on all three characteristics of God at the same time. See, I think a lot of times we think of it like a timeline. And we say, okay, over the past, God is the God who was. And over right here, right now, God is the God who is. And over the future, God is the God who will be. And all of that is true. But at the same time, over the past, God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. Right here, right now. God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. In the future, God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. And so, but today what we're going to do, we're going to, 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 to take communion the three different times, focusing on the three different characteristics of who God is. But we're also going to focus on what he says about us in those three different seasons as well. Now, I'm not making it about us. Hear, hear me say that clearly. But do we play a role in it? I think so. So, we're gonna, I'm going to guide this time together, and we'll start off like this. Luke 22, Verse 19, and this is, in Luke 22, the context of this passage is right before Jesus is going to, to the garden to be betrayed and be arrested, okay? This is the night before he's going to be crucified, and so he is with his disciples having the last supper with them, and this is where they take communion together. And Jesus, we know, we know the passage very well. Almost every time we do uh, uh, take communion, we, we use this passage right here. And it says that Jesus took the, the bread and he broke it. 
And he said, this is my body. And Jesus, he took the cup, and, and he said, and this is my blood. Now, this is what I want to point out. In verse 19, he says, and when he, has, uh, uh, when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're doing this in remembrance. So if you would think about in remembrance, God is the God who was. We need to remember who he is and what he has done. We must be a people that we remember who he is and what he has done. Now, if you look in the, in the Old Testament, and, and, and let me just throw this out there real quick. This is a, a, a book that gives a story. The whole thing's a story. And it's important for us to know the story that's within here. The Old Testament matters. Okay? So, this is a story. So, a part of the story of God, and that's the beautiful thing. This is God's story, and we get to see how our story fits in with God's story. That's one of the beautiful things. All right, but, and it also says, Paul writes in the New Testament, he said the things written of old were written so that we can learn. Okay, so in the, in the Old Testament, you see that a lot of times God is telling them things to do so that they remember. Matter of fact, in, like in Numbers 15, he tells them to take tassels and put tassels out and, 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 and to put stuff around the doorpost and things like that. And it's to help them remember his commandments. So he's telling them to do these things in remembrance, to help them remember his commandments. And it, it, then also, there was other times, like, uh, go with me to Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15, 15. You shall remember. Say that word. You shall remember that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God redeemed you. You shall remember, remember that you were once formerly slaves in Egypt, and the Lord, your God, redeemed you. And so, a lot, of, and if you sit there and you look at a lot of the feast that the, 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 the Jews had, the Hebrews had, they were feasts to help them remember what the Lord had done, like the Feast of Booths, for instance. You're supposed to uh, 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 not live in your house for a period of time, but go and set up this booth and live in this booth. And the whole point was to remember. And so there is a great importance for us to remember. Remember who God is, but also remember what he has done. And if you look in Deuteronomy 15, 15, it also says, remember where you were. Remember who God is, but remember that you were formerly slaves in Egypt and that the Lord, your God, redeemed you. So we have this importance of remembering. And, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll come back to that, that, that verse here in just a moment. But also... Um, uh, another thing that they would do a lot of times in the Old Testament is they would take and they would um, uh, stones, all right, and they would make um, uh, 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 an altar or memorial stones. Like, for instance, in Joshua chapter 4, when uh, uh, Joshua and, 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 and all of Israel was crossing over the Jordan River, uh, they were instructed for each tribe. There was 12 tribes of Israel. Each tribe to get a stone and to go and make this memorial stones 
so that in generations to come, they will say, what are these stones about? And it was like, ah, let me tell you what those stones are about. So those memorial stones was for a remembrance of who God was, what he did, and how he redeemed his people. And so you have a, a, a remembrance in, in, throughout Scripture, and we're constantly told to remember, 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 remember who God is, remember what He has done, and remember who you were. And I think that that's a, a, an important thing to remember. Like, and I, I know, i just throw this out there real quick, and I've said this before, but I've had one time uh, uh, somebody came to me, and they said, they said, Bo, you really believe all that stuff? Talking about the Bible and church and God, and he said, you really believe all that stuff? And I said, yeah, I sure do. He said, why? And I said, because I, I know who I was, and I know who he's made me. I know who I was, and I know who he has made me. That's a, a remembrance. And you know what? He, he was just like, okay, there you go. There, there you have it. But the importance of us remembering. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Man, I love me some Ephesians. Eric and I, we, we, uh, we're on the same, Eric Harrington that is, we're on the same um, uh, reading plan together. And, uh, and we just read through Ephesians together just a week or so ago. And we're both just talking back and forth about how much we love Ephesians and how we really learned our identity in Christ from the letter of Ephesians. And so it is, it is good, 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 good stuff. But uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Verse 12. Remember. Remember. That you were at a time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Remember. Remember. It says in Deuteronomy 15, 15, it said, remember that you were formerly slaves in Egypt. Well, you might say, well, I was never a slave in Egypt. Well, you might not have been literally in this world a slave in Egypt, but you were a slave. You were a slave to sin, and you were in bondage. We all were. Whether we were considered by this world a good person or not, but here's the thing, we were all slaves, and we were formerly without God, without hope in this world. And it's important for us to remember. We want to remember who God is, and we want to remember what He has done, that the Lord, our God, has redeemed us. And we want to remember what he redeemed us from. So, if you would, let's, let's prepare to take communion. And let's remember. Let's remember the Lord. He is, he is a God who is a God who was. In the Lord God has accomplished salvation and has given salvation to the world through His Son, Jesus. And the Father is reconciling the world back to Himself through Jesus. 
our God has already accomplished everything that needed to be done so that all men can be saved. Our God is a God who was. And remember that at a time, you, me, all of us, we were without hope and without God in this world. We were children of darkness. We were sinners. We were lost. We were blind. We were completely without. But then Jesus. But then Jesus. So, if you would, take a cracker. This is the body of Christ. And he who was whole came to be broken So that we who are broken could be whole. And if you would, this is just my preference, something I like to do. But if you would, as you stare at the body of Christ, break it. Remember, remember his broken body. Remember his broken body. And we thank you, Jesus, for your body and how you broke it for us. So let's take. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Then we have his blood. Jesus shed his blood for us. Without the shedding of blood, you have no forgiveness of sin. Jesus shed his blood. The perfect lamb of God. Shed his blood so that we would have forgiveness of sin. Once upon a time, we were slaves to sin. But we've been redeemed. We've been made new. And we are no longer slaves to sin, but now we're slaves to righteousness. Because of who Christ is, what he has done, and who we are in him. So let's remember Jesus as we drink his blood. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. So our God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. You see in Exodus 3, Moses, he has this encounter with God. And as he has this encounter with God, he's tell, a God himself is telling Moses to go back to Egypt And to set his people free. And Moses said, well, who is it that I should tell that that send me? Like, like why are they going to listen to me? Like, who am I? Like, why why are they going to listen to me? Who should I tell them is sending me? And God says in uh, uh, Exodus 3, verse 14, he says, I am who I am. And so, if you start looking at... That God is the God who is, 
We, especially people of the vineyard, we ought to be able to cheering and celebrating God is the God who is. Because we believe in the activity of Holy Spirit. We believe that God is alive and well. And we believe that He is still active today. And what He's done before, He is still doing. Because He is the same, just as Hebrews says, uh, Hebrews 13, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you hear God is the God who is, the God who was, God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, so God is alive and well now. And he is active right here, right now. And so we can clearly look at, 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 at Scripture and we can say God is the great I am. He is the great I am. And and I know a, a gentleman um, by the name of Derek Morphew. He, he's a, a, a vineyard scholar that lives in South Africa. And he really, he says that, the, that the, 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 the best way to translate that is, God is the becoming present one. Derek Morphew says that, that, that uh, uh, the Hebrew verbiage that is used there is a really unique way that it actually carries a past tense, a present tense, and a future tense all together. And so you could actually translate when God says in, in, in Exodus 3, you could translate it as God says, I, I am who I am, but it could also be translated as I was who I was. It could be translated as, I am who I am. Or it could be translated as, I will be who I will be. It's like, wow, God, you really are the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. And I love, I love how Jesus, and throughout uh, 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 the Gospels, it, and especially in John, Jesus has these I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the great shepherd. I am the resurrection in the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. You know, even this, this one time, the, uh, Jesus is having this conversation with the Pharisees, and Jesus clearly tells them, before Abraham was, I am. Like, oh my, I love it in John when they come to arrest John, I, I mean, uh, arrest Jesus in John, and it says that Jesus asks them, who is it that you're looking for? And he says, Jesus of Nazareth, and he says, I am. And it says they all step back and fail. I'm like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. All right, so Jesus is clearly saying, I am. But in that, I am the great shepherd. I was the great shepherd. I am the great shepherd. And I will be the great shepherd. Jesus is the same yesterday, today. And forever. Now go with me real quick to Exodus 3. I just kind of mentioned it, but I want to go there. I want to show you something. I, actually, I, I, I saw this as I was studying for this uh, uh, message and just kind of connected the dots. And I thought it was really cool. And hopefully y'all think it's cool like I think it's cool. So just go ahead and get your, you know, whether you like it or not, just make me think that you think it's cool. How about that? All right. So, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am, and he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent you. Verse 15, God furthermore said to the, uh, Moses, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of, of Jacob has sent me to you. And this is it. This is my name forever. This is my memorial name to all generations. 
This is memorial name forever to all generations. You remember what I just talked about from Joshua chapter 4? And how they set up those memorial stones to remember? And then now God's saying, this is my memorial name forever to all generations. Those memorial stones was a remembrance to generations to come. And here we see the name of God. God himself is saying, I am. I am the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be is a memorial name to you and your generations forever. I find that quite fascinating. All right. And then we have, again, in, 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 in the Exodus story, you see the presence of the living God. And just, uh, uh, just remind you real quick, we, we have talked about how the kingdom of God flows from the presence of the king, right? The kingdom message is there's a conquering king who came to set an oppressed people free. You see that in the Exodus story. Israel was an oppressed people. They were slaves in Egypt, Remember? See what I did there? Uh, Okay, remember, you were slaves in Egypt. So the conquering king came and set an oppressed people free. And he said, you are now my people. I will be your God and you will be my people. And I will be with you. And he was with them. Think about the Exodus story. A cloud by day. And a fire by night. That is the presence of I am with them at every single moment. At every single moment. And then, you know, so we spend this time remembering. Remembering God. And it's important for us to remember God. Remember what He has done in the past. But how do we bring that into the present? And this is where Marie and I, we're like, we're both teaching on Habakkuk, you know, back-to-back weeks. It's like, how cool is that? I'm reading from my phone because Habakkuk's hard to find. Actually, no, I can find it. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm reading a different translation, okay? I, I normally read from the NASB, and I just love the language of the NIV. And, of course, I was... I've been told by pastors before, if you don't like what one translation says, just look around until you find the one that does. Completely joking. Completely joking. That's not what I'm doing here. I just like the, I like the verbiage of the uh, NI, NIV um, uh, in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. And this is a prayer of Habakkuk. Lord, I have heard of your fame. Does that sound like he might be remembering? Remembering what God has done before? Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Get this. Repeat them in our day, in our time, make them known. Does that sound like a a song that we sing sometime? Oh God, of our mothers and fathers, what you have done before, what you were before, come and be again. Take this vineyard that you've planted and make us new wine. Oh God, of our mothers and fathers, come and be our God. What you've done before, come and do again. Our God is the same throughout the ages. He is consistent. He is faithful. He's the same through the ages. 
But it's important for us to know this because in the midst of, as we were singing today, as the midst of those low valleys, we need to remember who God is. We need to remember what He has done in the past. Because I believe that all of us would agree on the things that God has done in the past, but yet, many times, we think, even though He's done it in the past, I'm going to be the first one He fails in the present. Even though God has never failed before, first time in all of eternity, He's going to fail me right here, right now. And that's a lie from hell. What he's done before, he'll do again. Because our God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is not a respecter of man. What he does for one, he'll do for all. But we have to remember what God has done, and we need to remember what he's done before. He can and he will do again. So we have to remind ourselves of the things he's done re- before, but we also have to remind ourselves that he's alive and well and still active today. He is alive and well and still active today. That's a part of the gospel. That's why we can't leave Jesus in the grave when we're presenting the gospel. What's a dead man going to do for you? Nothing. He's alive. He's alive. Church, he's alive. Mm. And of course, we have the promise of Jesus right before he ascends to heaven. Matthew 28, in 18 through 20, he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And when they believe, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey all that I've commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always. I will be with you always. He is present. He's not just a God of the past. He is present right here, right now. If we talk about just the God of a past, what does a man 2,000 years ago mean to me today? Yes, He is the God who was, but He's also the God who is. He is present. He is here. He is active. The Father is always working. And that the the Holy Spirit being poured out is proof of an always present God. And it says in, 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 in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, is freedom. You were formerly slaves in Egypt, alienated, no hope without God in this world. But God is alive and well, and he is still active today. The Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, is freedom. So we no longer have to be a slave. We no longer have to be in bondage. We don't have to be a slave to sin any longer. We can be made new. All because our God is a God who is active. So again, a verse that, uh, our, our, our letter that Eric and I just got through reading through is Philippians. And in Philippians... Chapter 2, it says, It is God who's at work within you to will and to do. Right before that, it says, To work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I actually know a gentleman who, for so long, that was his life verse. I'm going to work out 
my salvation with fear and trembling. Thank you, God, for new life. Now let me pay you back, and I'm going to work it out. And then finally, someday, one day, somebody came to him, and he says, you know that that is not a period at the end of that verse. It's a semicolon. And he said that semicolon changed his whole walk with God. Because after the semicolon, it says, it is God who's at work within you to will and to do. Some of you need to hear that today. You need to know that God is at work within you. Now, do we have to give ourselves to what he wants to do? Absolutely. <laughs> That's where surrender comes in, right? And we have to continue to surrender into what he's doing. But a God, our God is alive and well, and he's active in what he's done before he is still doing today. And he's alive and well in you. You have Christ, the hope of glory. You were once formerly without hope, but now, but now, you have Christ, the hope of glory within you. And our God, who's not a God of the dead, but a God of the living, is alive and well and it is God who's at work within you to will and to do. Let's take communion again. Let's take communion again. And let's remember that God is a God of the now. Let's remember that our God is not in the grave. Let's remember that our God is is alive. And let's remember that our God is consistent, the same through the ages. Who he was before is still who he is right here and right now. And let's remember that he's at work within us. So if you would, take the body of Christ. We thank you, Jesus, for your body. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that you're alive and well, that you conquered sin and the grave. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you how you are here with us right here, right now. We thank you how you have poured out your spirit upon all flesh. And we thank you how you're the same through the ages. And we also thank you how you're at work within us. If you would, just right here, right now, would you just say yes to God? I say yes, God, to what you want to do in me. I say yes, God, to what you are doing in me. I say yes to you, God. Let's take his body and remember that he's alive and well and he is active in us and through us and in all the world. Let's take. Let's take his blood again in remembrance of how he's at work in our lives. See, sin had left a crimson stain, but he has made us as white as snow. 
We are pure. We are holy. We are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And he's at work within us to live that out. So let's take his blood in remembrance of what he is doing in our lives here and now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, how it's so important for us to remember that Jesus is Lord. And that he is coming back. I think we can get so overwhelmed by the the mess of everything that we see. And we get overwhelmed by that. And we lose sight in the fact that Jesus is coming back. And there will be the day where we have a new heaven and a new earth. And we will see him face to face. Even though we see dimly now, the time is coming when we will see him face to face. And we will know him just as he is. That is beautiful. And it's important for us to remember that he is coming. Maybe sometimes we can get so fixated on the here and now that we forget about his coming. You know, that happened in Acts chapter 1. As soon as Jesus raised from the grave and, and, he, and he presented himself alive, and in, in, uh, in Acts chapter 1, it says that he showed himself to his followers to prove that he was alive. And for 40 days, he was with them and continued to teach them about the kingdom of God. Even after all that time, he still, his message was the kingdom of God. And they said, Jesus, is it at this time that you're going to restore all things? And Jesus said, don't worry about that, but you go and be my witnesses. So we can look at the future in such a way and get fixated in in, in such a way that, 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 that we do it wrongly, right? Okay, we could talk about that for a while, but we're running out of time. Or we could be so fixated on, on the fact that God is doing it right here, right now, and, and, and we expect the fullness of it right here, right now, that we forget about the future part of it. But in, in, and so, and this is kind of the context of what's happening in Acts chapter 1. But it says in, in, in verse 10, in, uh, or well, let me go 9. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going. Behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. The exact same way. And, and so they're saying, they're saying, this Jesus, the one that you see going, he will come back. And so we actually live in this tension of we're, we, we need to be present in what God is doing right here, right now, but know that this isn't the final product. He is coming. He is coming. And in this, I was actually convicted pretty greatly. 
And I started asking myself, if Jesus came right here, right now, would I be excited or expectant? And if I'm honest, I don't think I'd be expectant. I'd be excited. Man, I'd be excited. But I can't say that I'd be expectant. But we're not called to live in excitement of his coming. We're called to live in expectance of his coming. Just like the the ten virgins, that they're waiting for the bridegroom to come. And they're keeping oil in their lamp to keep their lamps burning because they don't know the hour or the time when he's coming, but they're expectant. They're looking out. They're ready to go. And many times Jesus shares parables just like this. And he says, keep looking, keep expecting. Don't get caught off guard. But be expecting. Matter of fact, Jesus says, in the last days, will be just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, where people were eating and drinking and giving to one another in marriage. They were focused on the here and now. And not expected of what's coming. He says, be expectant. And, you know, and as I read, and again, here's mine and Eric's current reading plan. We started 1 Thessalonians today. And if you look at 1 Thessalonians, Paul is actually writing the the letter to, to, to the church in Thessalonica saying, get to work. Get to work. You're sitting around doing nothing, so look at, looking for Jesus to return that you, you're not even working. I'm like, wow. How did Paul preach the message, preach the gospel in such a way that the people of Bethlehemica, they just did this? It could be right now. It could be right now. Oh, oh, hey, oh, right now. Oh, now? Now! How did he preach in such a way that they sat around and do that to the point that Paul had to write them a letter and said, hey, kind of glad you're expected, but get to work. So we're supposed to live in this tension where we're right here, right now, working right here, right now, but we have an expectance of His return. And when He returns, we were so, oh, hey, Jesus. Not surprised. Because we're expectant. We, li- we are to live in that tension right here, right now. And so, how does that apply in us personally? Again, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. He who starts a good work in you, he will see it through to completion. So you might, so we're, we're to be looking and remembering the past. Remembering the God who was what he has done before, but also knowing that he's alive and well and he is working still today, but at the same time, looking to what he will be doing. Maybe you're looking at your personal walk with Christ and you're like, man, I'm, just be honest, I'm really not happy where I am right now. Philippians 1, verse 6. He who starts a good work in you We'll see it through to completion. So as we realize that it is God who's at work within us to will and to do, and we continue to just say yes, 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 Lord, to what He is doing in us and through us, He will form Christ in us. 
and you become what you behold. Have you heard that before? You become what you behold. So what are you beholding? Or who are you beholding? God is faithful. And God is at work. And what he's done before, he is doing again. And he will continue to do. So let's take communion again. And as we take communion again, I want us to remember. See, even though we're the God who was, the God who is, and the God who will be, past, present, future, we're still remembering. We're doing this in remembrance of Him. So let's take communion again. But as we take communion again, let's remember of Christ's return. Let's remember that He is coming and He will be our God and we will be His people and He will live amongst us. He will dwell amongst us to the point there won't even be a need for the sun because the glory of the Lord will shine. The day is coming when our Lord will return and He will make a new heaven and a new earth. He will make all things new. It will happen. It will happen. He is coming. He is coming. But let's also, as we take communion, let's remember that He's bringing us through the process to make us more and more like Christ. Who you are today won't be who you are tomorrow or the next day or the next month or the next year because our God is taking us in the process to form Christ in us. So let's take the body of Christ in remembrance, in remembrance that our God is the God who will will be He is coming back. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. And the day will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess Jesus as Lord. Our God is coming. And He's also bringing you in the process. So let's take the body of Christ as we remember. Let's take the blood of Christ in remembrance, in remembrance that everything He has already accomplished, it is for all eternity going forward. The blood of Christ in remembrance that even though they had a system that, 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 they had to repeat over and over and over and over and over in the law because, because the perfect lamb wasn't yet given. Now the perfect lamb has been given. And we can drink in remembrance of the blood of Jesus. And it has covered all. And he is a God who is in all and of all. And all things are to him. So let's drink right now in remembrance of who He is, what He has done, and that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever.
Hey, Daniel, do y'all have another song? Hey, if I could get the, the, the worship team come up. And I just, can we just in this moment, just for a couple of minutes, let's enter in to worship and praise as we remember who our God is, what He has done, and that our God is a God who was, a God who is, and a God who will be. He is the faithful one. Would you stand with me now? Could I have just a couple people come up here for, for, for ministry? I, I really feel like this message, maybe many of you were getting mis- ministered to during the message. But if, if I could, just have a ministry team come up. And if you would, would you come and just talk to these men and women up here and just say, hey, this is how God was ministering to me. And would you let us pray for you during this time? But, but right here, right now, we want to just enter into a time of worship and let's remember, this is, this is Thanksgiving week. And as believers in Christ Jesus, we have so much to be thankful for So let's remember, let's remember what the Lord has done. Let's remember what the Lord is doing and let's remember what He will do. And let us raise our hands, our voices, our eyes and let us give it all to Him in decoration and praise and adoration and let's declare that our God is indeed alive. And let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's give Him the honor, the praise, and the glory. For He and He alone is worthy. So in this moment, let us worship. And I just say this just right here, right now. Just because I see the time. If you have to leave, you're free. So I'm going to go ahead and get a a soft dismissal right here, right now. So I don't have to come back up here. But I just want to say, be blessed. Enjoy your Thanksgiving with your community, with your family. And let's be a people that remember. I bless you in Jesus' name.
you're dismissed. Go in the goodness and grace of God today in all this world.